Hello and welcome back to another Ravenna Railfan 4070 HO scale review. Boy, it's been a long time since we've done one of these. I think probably coming up on about two years. But reviews are back and I am super excited to show you guys this one. This is Bachman's new Pennsylvania Railroad GP35 with DCC and sound. Now this does say DCC and sound value, but this is one of the uh, newer decoders if you haven't heard bachman has started to switch over from soundtracks to tcs on all their sound line so this is going to be a real fun review here can't wait to see what this has let's go ahead and see what's in the box okay so um one thing to note, the box does not show that this has TCS. So when you go to order these, if you're looking for the TCS version, which I highly recommend over the original, uh, make sure on your order that it says TCS. So right out of the box, we have a parts manual. the schematics here next we have our quick start guide which you'll see does mention that this is uh, TCS uh, they've got information on the TCS here and a little disclaimer basically saying this assumes you have a TCS decoder uh, sound value decoder features. This also has a keep alive. Um, if you are to take this locomotive off the track, you'll notice it stays on for about 10 seconds. That's a good rule of thumb to tell if an engine has one. Uh, automatic sounds when operating on DC power. Supports both 28 and 128 speed step modes. Uh, light features, rule 17. Sound features, you have uh, 1W plus amplifier for uh, powerful sound. You have variable horn lengths, a large number of sound variations, and the new function mapping, which we'll talk about in a second. Throttle modes, uh, traditional is the default. And then there's manual notching as well. Okay, programming. I can set the address there. This is in relation to uh, Bachman's Easy Command. DC operation information. And here is your uh, function map. I'll kind of zoom out there and you'll see this has more than your traditional Bachman engines of old uh, it would typically have probably four or five functions listed from one to nine which you would uh, and ten is the headlight of course which you would then plug into uh, easy command with you'll notice this has three pages of functions so there's a note here what you do is you go on function eight and uh you press twice because once is to mute or unmute so you press twice and you can rotate um, the pages so for example this is page one when i hit eight twice the engine is then set on page two so um, zero through eight here change to these functions. Now that's set up specifically for their easy command so that you can access higher functions with the Bachman controller. Um, the same thing works on NCE or any of your other Digitrack systems, things like that. And then of course you hit uh, eight twice again and it changes to function page three, which shows you this. 
hit function eight twice again, and you're back to where you started at one. So here's your regular function mappings. If you're gonna do higher functions without switching to the pages, they've nicely included that. Uh, note that is for 28 function systems. And of course you have your warranty and your little order. Form. Okay, now here's the locomotive. Bachman's pretty much standard packaging on this. I like it. It's not overly complicated, but it protects. Okay. Let's take the locomotive, uh, put it on the track here, and we'll get started. Okay, let's get right into it here. Uh, notice on this scheme you have the keystone here over on both sides and back here by the cab. Uh, no main lettering on this particular paint scheme, but that's the way it was made. You've got number boards up here, which are very hard to see, but that is because they are lighted. You've got your horn, your headlights. It's even got little windshield wipers in the windows. Uh, you have little markers. They don't light up, but they're there, at least drawn out in the mold of the engine. Um, you've got all these little logos and safety warnings. Then you have your exhaust fans. Uh, you got your little letter F, your painted steps. There's the F, your painted steps, and of course your cut lever right there. And if I turn the engine around, you have one more keystone on the back, uh, your lighted number boards again, and then your fake uh, markers in the mold there with the crew steps. Okay, let's go ahead and apply track power. You'll notice this is gonna do an automatic startup. I am a big fan of that automatic start. All right, let's go ahead and get into the functions. F0, F10 is of course your headlight. I'm not quite sure why it honked, I must have pressed the wrong button. Okay, uh, it's a bit of a spoiler alert, but anyways, F1 is the bell. F2 is the longhorn. F3 is the shorthorn. F4, which you already heard, is the horn quill for a crossing. Now for this next one, uh, we're going to show you F5, which is the train brake. So, what I'm going to do, uh, you have to have the train moving for this sound to come on. So I'm going to back up and run at the camera a little so you guys can see this.
That'll do about there. Here we go. And train brake. Yeah, it was a little bit quiet, but of course it's louder and more pronounced when the train's going a bit faster. Uh, a lot of locomotives will just make that sound and not stop, but this actually brings the locomotive to a complete stop when you hit that sound, which is really cool. Okay, F6 is your shutdown sequence. I know typically that's eight, but here's the difference on this. Uh, F6 is your shutdown and F8 is just the mute only. You don't want it to shut down, but you want it to mute it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and click six again to start the engine back up. Then uh, function seven here will dim the lights for rule 17. Now we're gonna go ahead and press eight twice. Eight once will simply mute the engine like that. Eight twice brings you to the next function page. Night mode active. First you have to skip through night mode, so let's hit it again. So I've hit eight twice, I'm past night mode, and now I'm on function page two. Uh, F0 is your manual notch up. Again, kind of have to have the engine moving to show you that. And then one is your manual notch down, which kicked in automatically there. F2 for page two is the coupler close. F3 is coupler release. And here the cut lever come up and it would typically uncouple a car. Uh, F4 is your brake release. Which I guess I have to set a brake on first. Uh, F5 is your dynamic braking. This is quite loud. And it does take it a minute to shut off. Sometimes to get that out of the way, I'll just bump the engine forward a little bit and it brings it back to normal. Okay, F6 is your momentum setting if you wanna change that. I'm not gonna do that right now. F7 is your crew alert. And this engine, when it does the crew alert, uh, if you will not touch the controller after about 20 seconds of you not instructing the engine to do anything, it will bring the locomotive to a stop simulating a emergency situation. Okay, let's go to page three. So I'll hit eight twice again. Function page three. F zero is the air spitter. F one is your forward quill. 
F2, reverse quill. F3, stop quill. F4 allows you to rotate the horn or the bell. Leslie, R, F3. Leslie, R, F, 3, L. Nathan, K, 3. Nathan, K, 3, H. Nathan, M, 3. Nathan P3 Vatco E2 3 chai Leslie 3 chai And you're back to the default setting on this locomotive. Okay, F5. This is really cool. You have to listen closely. But this even has sound effect for the windshield wipers. You'll hear that clicking. F6 is your exhaust fan. F7 is not used on that page. So that is the functions. You would hit four again if you wanted to rotate through the bells. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hit function page one. eight twice again, which takes us back to function one. All right, let's hook this thing up to some cars and see how she does. Okay, so we have our test crane sitting down the track. I'm gonna move the engine around a little bit real quick so you can see uh, how it moves according to speed steps. So let's take her back. Speed step one, it's already moving very smoothly. There's very, very slight hesitation. Step two, starts to notch. Three, Four, five, six, and we'll bring it back down again because we don't want to tie onto the train just yet. And we'll come forward. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on. Then you'll hear it notch down again. Let it settle into idle. And we'll go back and get our test train. Okay, now that we have our test train, I am going to just let <clears throat> the engine pull so you can see a little bit of this thing in action.
And there you have it. She handled that train quite nicely. Uh, it's a little test train. It was pretty easy. I unfortunately don't have a very good way of measuring how many cars will pull. I will do a full test in the future. But I would think this is easily able to do about 40 cars or so. I know the old soundtracks, GP38s, can do about 30. And there you have it. That is Bachman's GP35 with DCC and TCS Wow Sound. Hope you've enjoyed this review and it was helpful to you. I highly recommend one of these engines if you love Bachman, DCC Sound, and EMDs. Hope you've enjoyed and you'll join us again next time right here on the channel. Ravenna Railfan 4070 out.